Good afternoon everyone, this is Mikeimus. I'm posting a video today on Kent Hovind's, I mean Venom Fang X's water canopy theory and why it is inaccurate and downright easy to refute. Now I received a letter from Magname01, this is my source. He's a very intelligent person. I would highly suggest if you uh, don't have a subscription to him or uh, add him on to your friends at least. Um, the letter reads as follows. I thought you'd find the math I did interesting. This was about the water canopy idea. Refs at the bottom. If you ever need facts, let me know. I'm going to put the references on the um, description, video description, as well as the entire letter. Now he mentions the strength of a magnetic field is measured in Tesla and Gauss, or I'm not sure how that's pronounced. I'm just going to pronounce it as Gauss. One Tesla equals 10,000 Gauss. At sea level, the Earth generates a magnetic field of about half Gauss, or one twenty thousandth of a Tesla. For reference, Earth's magnetic field is 0.5 Gauss. A refrigerator magnet holding a shopping list is about 10 Gauss, and a cupboard door latch magnet about 400 Gauss. Therapeutic magnets range from 200 to over 10,000 Gauss. So a normal fridge magnet is 20 times more powerful than the entire Earth's magnetic field. So how much force is required to levitate a single drop of water? A water ball levitates inside a 32 millimeter vertical bore of a bitter solenoid in a magnetic field of about 16 Tesla at the Nijmegen uh, High Field Magnet Laboratory. 16 Tesla is required to float one drop of water. So, 16 Tesla times 10,000 equals 160,000 Gauss. 160,000 Gauss divided by Earth's Gauss of 0.5 is 320,000. So in order to levitate one drop of water, the field must be at least 320,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnet field. How many drops of water make one gallon? A drop is defined as 1 60th of a teaspoon. See that uh, there's an attached link. Uh, there are 60 drops per teaspoon. There are 3 teaspoons per tablespoon, so 180 drops per tablespoon. There are 16 tablespoons per cup, so 2,880 drops per cup. There are 4 cups per quart, so 11,520 drops per quart. And 4 quarts per gallon, so 46,080 drops per gallon. So in order to suspend 1 gallon of water, you would need a field of 160,000 gauze times 46,000 80 drops that equals roughly 7.3278 um, e uh, um, plus nine nine I apologize um, gauze so 7.3728 e plus nine gauze which is seven billion three hundred seventy two million eight hundred thousand for anybody who doesn't understand quotients uh, times Earth's field of 0.5 gauze is for uh, one point four seven four five six e plus not uh, ten. I apologize. Ten times stronger than the Earth's field to suspend one gallon of water. That's fourteen billion seven hundred forty-five thousand six hundred thousand times stronger than the Earth's field to suspend it one gallon of water. How many gallons um, of water on Earth? Uh, approximately four e plus. 20 gallons, which is 4 times 10 to the 20th power gallons. Um, that's a really big number. According to H. V. Thurman, 1997 Introductory Oceanography, 8th edition, Prentice Hall, Incorporated, page 80 and 139, uh, that's the approximate um, volume of water, that's where it's cited. Uh, the equation below will tell us how many gauze is required to suspend all the world's water. 7.3278 e plus 9 remember that number we got previously gauze per gallon times 4 e plus 20 gallons equals 2.94912 e plus 30 gauze is required to suspend all the world's water the earth's field would have to be 5.89824 e plus 30 times what it is now Basically, anything metallic would be impossible to pick up. The iron in our blood would collect in our feet and rip the bottom of our feet off. Um, so, basically, that just proves that the water canopy idea is bullshit. 
All right, appreciate you watching my video and uh, Magnum A's letter. Appreciate any responses you have on it.